feel free to do is pause the video at this point in time and begin the warm up. Okay, so hopefully you paused and you um, have answered the questions. I don't know if you remember how to complete a mapping, but this says Anita is making chicken noodle soup. The recipe calls for three times as much broth as meat. So we're going to complete the mapping to represent the situation. So let's think about that. You have one piece of meat, you've got three cups of broth for that. So if she has one as her domain, then the range would be three. So if she has two pieces of meat, I guess, or two chunks of meat, whatever the case may be, then how much broth is she going to have? You're probably thinking, duh, Miss Wellens, that's so simple, six cups of broth. So that's all that this is. Um, we are taking the domain as our x value. It, is represents, it represents the amount of meat that she has. And our range is our y value, and it represents how much broth specifically for that number of, or that amount of meat. So let's go ahead and show the answers so that we can see. So this is called a mapping because it shows that when she has one cup, or one piece of meat, she has three times as much broth. Two times the meat, still three times as much, which results in six being the amount of broth. So then it asks us to write a function to represent the situation and we came up with y equals three times x. If you plug in each x value, like right here my x is one, so three times one gives me a y value or my range value of three. So now number three, for every dollar a customer spends, Mike earns a 15 cent tip. Let x be the number of dollars a customer spends. So then we had to pick which equation is true. And you could just think about this. If, he, if someone spends $1, we know he earns $0.15. Cents. So if they spend $2, we know he earns $0.30. Cents. So x would be the number of dollars. So that was, if I plug in a 1 here, 1, negative 1, or well, 1 squared, and then becomes a negative, that's, that gives me $3. So clearly it can't be a. So then we can check B if I plug in 1 for X, 1 times 0.15 is 0.15. Plug in 2, 0.15 times 2 is 0 0.30. Then we can check C. C doesn't work either. So logically think about what the answer could be. And if it's multiple choice like that, plug it in and check. Or maybe you don't need to plug it in and check. You automatically knew 15 cents times the amount of dollars they spend is going to give me Y, how much money he might earn. All right, Florida has a 6% sales tax. This is where a lot of people make mistakes. 6%, um, when I write that as a decimal, it's not 0.6. That would be 60%. It's 0 0.06. So he has a 6% sales tax. If an item costs $5, then you pay $5.30. If an item costs $10, you pay $10.60, and so on. So let X be the price of an item. So once again, they're giving you the information. You plug it in and see. If I plug in 5 for X, what will give me out $5.30? And clearly the answer is C. But once again, you maybe if it wasn't multiple choice and you just needed to check that, you were paying 100% of the $5. So that's where that 1 comes from in, in letter C. It's 1.06. The one is saying, okay, I'm paying 100% of the price and an additional 6%, which is the 0 0.06 in sales tax. And then last of all, our domain and range. If we plug in a 2, we get out a 0. We plug in 0, we get out 4. We plug in 3 or a negative 3, and we get out a negative 5. And that aligns with letter A. All right, so moving on. Today, what we're going to talk about is functions and continuity, and um, these are the standards. I'm not going to spend time reading over that, but you can pause it and read it if you would like. But the key vocabulary, this is the important part, is um, functions. That's important to know, obviously, since we're talking about functions. And it's important to understand continuity, and we're going to cover that as we move throughout the material. But our domain is just a set of x values that's going to be evaluated by a function. We already talked about that in the 
warm up. X values is my domain, so therefore Y values are my range. It's the set of Y values that result from the given values of X. So what is codomain? This is probably maybe the first time you've ever heard of codomain. The codomain is the set of all the Y values that could possibly result from the evaluation of the function. Once again, I would take a moment to pause this video and I would write down these definitions in my notebook so that I have them because on your, vocab or on your chapter test there will be a section on vocabulary. So I would make sure that I write these down, maybe make some flashcards, start studying them now so you really understand them and have them memorized. So the codomain is the set of all the Y values that could possibly result from the evaluation of the function. And the range is the set that actually does happen. It's what we actually do get when we evaluate the function. Okay, so a continuous function is a function that can be graphed with a line or an unbroken curve. And think about what continuous means. It means it keeps on going. It doesn't stop. So if I was going to look at a graph, um, let me find a marker here. Um, I'm looking at a function. This is considered to be continuous because there's no break in the graph. But if I was to put a point here, let's just take a little chunk out of it, and then it starts over. Now this is no longer continuous. This is a discrete function because my all of my points are not connected. So continuous means it just keeps on going. It might be a straight line. It might be a parabola. It might have a negative slope. It might have a positive slope. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is that there's no break in the graph. Discrete could be a step function, something that looks like this. Oops, I don't know if you can see this. I'm having a hard time with my camera. Um, so this is a discrete function. There's breaks in it. It's up here. Or maybe I have a line. And then another line that looks something like this. And let me see. Those are discrete functions because there's a break. There aren't arrows to show that it keeps on continuing forever and ever. Okay, so let's look at a few examples. Let's look at functions. What is a function? A function describes the relationship between input and output values. It helps input and outputs the same thing as the domain and the range. Um, so it describes the relationship between my X values and my Y values. For example, suppose that you record the number of volunteer hours that you still need to complete at the end of each semester before graduation. Your function could be 1, 40, 2, 36, 3, 24, 4, 18, 5, 16, I keep on going. The sets of X and Y values in a function have special names. So once again, the X values is called the domain. In this function, the domain is the semesters. First semester, second semester, third semester, fourth semester, fifth semester, sixth semester, seventh, and eighth. We have eight semesters before graduation to each year. The codomain is the set of all of the Y values that could possibly result from the evaluation of the function. The codomain of a function is assumed to be all real numbers unless it states otherwise in the problem. So in this function, the codomain is going to be non-negative numbers um, because my hours, I can't have negative hours. That doesn't even make sense. So my codomain is going to be all positive numbers. The range is the set of values that actually result from evaluating the function. So if I look at this evaluation of these x values, these particular ones, then this is my given range. These are the output values that I'm going to get. That just kind of brings it home and lets you see an example. So once again, um, I'm going to load this problem. and I would like for you to take a moment to pause the video and try to answer this. So to define the domain, the range, and the codomain of the graph and state whether it is on to. So you're probably thinking, what a world is on to, Ms. Blevins. We're going to talk about it. 
to tap on each button to identify the domain, it says. So our domain is our set of x values. So in this problem, in this given graph, my domain is going to be all x values because those arrows keep going down. And as it goes down, we can see that the graph is getting wider and wider and wider. It's spreading out further and further and further. So my domain is all of those x values. My range is specifically the values greater than, um, I'm sorry, not greater than, less than zero. My range is my y value. So I'm looking specifically at everything below zero, starting at zero and down below. So we want to include zero and everything smaller than zero. Remember, the range is just the y values. So my domain, I looked at the x values that go along this way. My range is my y values that go along the y axis. So because the maximum y value that I have on this graph is zero, we say specifically that my range is y's less than or equal to zero. And what is the codomain? Well, once again, unless it's stated otherwise, the codomain is always all real numbers. Okay, so we're going to use the codomain and the range to determine whether the function is on to. Let me move this over here if I can. There we go. Okay, so it says the range is not the same as the codomain. Therefore, the function is not on to. I want you to think about that for a minute. The range is not the same as the codomain. My range was everything less than or equal to zero. The codomain is all real numbers. That's not the same, excuse me, that's not the same thing. Mine's everything less than zero. That's my actual range. The codomain says every number. Could be positive, it could be above zero, it could be less than zero. It's all numbers. So since they're not the same, that means it is not on two. It is not on two if the codomain and the range are not the same. All right, so let's try our example number two. Identify one-to-one -one and on-to functions. So it says the table shows the number of medals the United States won at five Summer Olympic Games. Just fun little fact, um, I recently found out that Mr. Johnson um, got married over the summer and the lady that he married is going to be competing in the Olympics in Beijing. Isn't that so cool? Right here at West, she helps train in our weight room. We have someone who's going to be competing in the Olympics. That is pretty awesome. So anyway, back to this problem. So it's define the domain and the range of each function and state whether it's on to, one to one, both or neither. So you're probably wondering, all right, Ms. Bowens, what is one to one? Let's go ahead and look at this, and maybe you can figure it out as we go. It says, tap on each button to analyze the functions that give the number of gold and silver medals won in a particular year. So let's look at gold medals. Here's my number of gold medals. In 2016, we won 46. In 2012, 46. 2008, 36. 2004, 36. And 2037. So it says, let f of x be the function that gives the number of gold medals won in a particular year. The domain is in the column year, this one right here in the column year, and the range is in the column number of gold medals. So this is my domain over here in year, and my number of gold medals is my range. The function is not one-to-one. -one because two values in the domain share the same value in the range. So one-to-one -one means that each input is paired with exactly one output. And this, I'm, I'm sorry, that's the definition of a function. In a function, each input is paired to exactly one output. But in one-to-one, -one, if you have two inputs, two different inputs, like 2016, 2012, that are paired with the same output, then it is not one-to-one. -one. 
because 2016 goes to 46 and 2012 goes to 46. They both go to 46, so that is not one to one. It can still be a function because each input is paired with exactly one output. I don't have 2016 got 46 medals and 2016 they got 36 medals. That wouldn't even make sense. In 2016 they got 46 medals. That input is paired with exactly one output, so that makes it a function. But because two different years receive the same number of medals, that is not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so then it says, determine um, if the function is onto. Well, the function is not onto because the range does not include every whole number or every real number. It says that a function is on to if every possible outcome is included. We don't have every possible outcome included. So the function is not on to because the range does not include every whole number. All right, so let's keep on moving here. Example three, identify one-to-one -one and on-to functions by looking at the graph. So, is this function one-to-one? -one? Does each x value go to a different y value? So, looking at this, the graph indicates that the domain, my x values, is all real numbers. But my range looks like it starts at zero and goes above. It doesn't look like this is going to go below zero. It's going to get really, really close to zero, but it doesn't look like it's going to go below zero. So the graph indicates that the domain is all real numbers and the range is all positive real numbers. My y values is everything above zero. So every x value is paired with exactly one unique y value. So therefore the function is one to one. The codomain is all real numbers and the range is not equal to the codomain. My range is only everything greater than zero. It does not include all real numbers. So the function is not on two. So let's check our answers. Woohoo, we're correct. I'm going to move around to turn my light back on. Here we go. And let's look at the next example. Okay, my, this states up here that the codomain is y such that y is less than or equal to 4. So it gives me a codomain. The graph indicates that the domain is all real numbers and the range is all values of y less than or equal to 4. So each x value is not paired with a unique y because look at the value of, let's look at um, the x value of 2 and 0. They have the exact same y value. And if I go over, I wish that you could, I don't, I think that you can see my mouse moving on screen. If I go over here, 2, I go up 1, 2, 3. So when I plugged in a 2, I got out 3. But when I plug in 0, I also get out 1, 2, 3 for my y value. So an x value of 0 and an x value of 1 have the exact same y value of 3. Therefore, my function is not 1 to 1. Is the codomain and the range are equal, so therefore the function is on 2 because it's specified up here that my codomain is y values less than or equal to 4. We can tell that my range starts here at that 4 and it goes down forever and ever and ever, so it's less than or equal to 4. Since they're the same, it is on 2. Okay, we're not going to keep going through all of these. I'm going to go ahead and stop. I think this is enough for one day, it's a lot of information. And I know it's kind of boring to watch videos. I'm going to try to make it as interesting as I can. Um, bear with me, I know it's not real fun watching this. And we'll also have some live discussions, but please make sure that you're taking notes, that you're following along, and that you are watching these videos.